on this computer. Okay, <clears throat> so I think I'm recording now on this computer. I guess I'll find out when it's, uh, it's over. Um, so uh, I'm gonna go through some slides and show you some things. And then I'm gonna fire up uh, the uh, software and go through it a little bit, Octave. It's, you'll be able to cut and paste the Octave commands directly into MATLAB, either live script or just a .m file and it'll work fine. Uh, but for now, we're gonna just go through these slides. You can see that I've got the master slide up right here, right now. And uh, your reading assignment is chapter six. We're gonna do logicals and programming. This is the, the fundamentals of programming is what we're gonna do today. Um, are there any questions before we get started? Okay, um, at the end, I'll give everybody a chance to talk. Anybody that wants to talk uh, can definitely talk at the end. Uh, and the other thing is, is if you're having trouble with software, with labs, with whatever, um, I've done a ton of videos, please reference them first, but if you can't get it, we can use this mechanism where I can see your screen and you can see my screen and we can uh, remedy whatever problem you're having. It's gonna be like this for a while, I got a feeling, okay? If you look at the numbers, they're going up like drastically. Uh, yeah, just like in the last two days, I think it went up like 4,000 more people. So um, anyhow, okay, let's get started. Chapter six. This chapter uh, will study how to make MATLAB programs run. Uh, we say programs, you want a program to say, if something happens, go do something else. Or while something's happening, do this. Uh, or for a certain number of times, if this is true, do this. <clears throat> we'll also learn uh, how to run different sections of code depending on the value of the variable, what particular condition is true, what combination of conditions are true. For instance, Isabel might like orange juice and Tate might like uh, grape juice. And so we will do some conditionals to decide whether both of those have to be true for us to go on or uh, only one of them. Uh, what relationships two things have, uh, one less than the other, one greater than the other. And in chapter six, you can find the beginning of this stuff with the relationship. My book is actually falling apart, but um, on page 176, relational operators, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, um, less than or equal to or equal to, which is two equal to signs and not equal to, which is the little squiggly in the equal to. We're gonna go over all those things today. Here, here are those relational operators, less than, greater than, <clears throat> less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Equal to is two equal signs and not equal to. We will use the not command a fair amount, but not the not equal to not too often. You can't put spaces between the operators. Uh, not equal is that not as in C with the exclamation point. Every language has its own. Uh, I don't remember what it is in Python, but Python has not equal to as well. This is slide five. You can see the slide down in the corner there is slide five. We're gonna go through the 29 slides and then I am going to fire up the software and do a bunch of examples. And then I'm gonna create a script that you can use later, cut and paste uh, to do your own thing, okay? Results of comparing with relational operators always true or false. It's a one or a zero. The light's either on or it's off. Uh, there's no in between. It's, it's on or it's off uh, and that's, that's it. So it's a one or a zero and it's a one bit integer, okay? It's not actually an integer, it's just a one bit uh, operative inside of uh, the code. When comparing arrays, they must be the same dimension. In other words, if you have, if you wanna compare two arrays, if one has three elements in it, then the other has that three elements. You don't need a dot command, but it has to be one for one. MATLAB does element wise comparison that can compare one thing to a whole bunch of things or a whole bunch of things to a whole bunch of things. But if it's a whole bunch of things, then it has to be one-to-one. -one. When comparing arrays to scalars, 
Uh, MATLAB compares Scalar to every member of the array and gives you an answer for every one of these. So if you have an array of 10 items and you compare it to one thing, you're going to get 10 answers. Let's give an example here. As you can see, X 8 to 12. This is going to generate 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, as it does right here on your screen, independent of which code you use. If I say X greater than 10, whenever that's true, it's going to return a 1. And whenever it's false, it's going to return a 0. So is 8 greater than 10? No, 0. 9 greater than 10? No, 0. Is 10 greater than 10? No, 0. 10 is greater than or equal to, but it's not greater than. 11 greater than 10, yes. 12 greater than 10, yes. 11 equal to, uh, x equal to 11, okay? And it looks in here, it looks in x, and it finds the only place where it's equal to 11 and sets it to one. And that's the yes, okay? We will later use these as references to find where in the string or in the array that item is, or items x greater than or equal to seven, always true, always one. <clears throat> okay, so here's, you're doing a one for one comparison when you do this, x is greater than 10, you're, you're looking at each one of these to see if it's true, as I did in my previous example. If you have a question at any time, demute your mic and just jump in, okay? And we'll stop. The re results of a relational comparison stored in a vector can easily find the number of elements that satisfy that comparison. So if one, you know, if you're looking for all the numbers three in a random list, it'll find those and tell you where they're at. You can use the sum command, which returns the sum of the of all of those true statements. It works because the elements that are true will always have a value of one. And the ones that are false will always have a value of zero. So how many numbers from one to 20 are prime? This is a great example. There's a, um, a routine called is prime. It works in both pieces of software. So if I create numbers from one to 20 and then I say is prime numbers, it's going to send back a one whenever it's true and a zero when it's not. And then if I sum those, I get the answer eight. So one is not a prime. Two is a prime. Three, five, seven, 11, 13, 17, 19, eight. If I had gone any higher, I would have run out of fingers. It would have been terrible. The end of math as we know it. Can mixed relations uh, and arithmetic operators in one expression? Okay, so you can mix things in one expression, but there are rules of precedence, and they are given on page 180 of your textbook, which is hopefully in better shape than mine. <clears throat> okay, and those rules of precedence will be given next, but they are. Uh, Parentheses is the highest. Exponentiation, next highest. Logical not is the next highest. Mathematical uh, um, multiplication and division, next highest. After that, addition and subtraction. Then rational operators like greater than or less than. And then finally, logical operators like end or, or else or and those kind of things, okay? So when I look at this, whoops, go back. When I look at this expression right here, three plus four, okay? Three plus four is gonna be done before it uses the rational, uh, this, this guy here, he's low on the totem pole. So three plus four is seven, 16 divided by two is eight. That's gonna be the first operation. So eight is greater than seven. It's gonna return an answer of one. And since I didn't set it equal to anything, it's just going to throw it into answer. Three plus four, okay, uh, less than 16. So four is less than 16, but it's in parents. It's going to do this first. It's going to get a one. The one is going to be divided by two because division comes before addition. So you're going to get one half. And three plus one half is 3.5.
A logical vector or logical array is a vector of arrays that has only logical ones and zeros. Okay? Ones and zeros are all that's going to be in these logical arrays. They can also be used in arithmetic. Uh, MATLAB changes it to a numerical vector array if used in arithmetic expressions. Can logical vectors get actual values of satisfied relations, not just whether the relation is satisfied? Doing this is called logic mixing or logical subscripting. Uh, you do this by using logical vector as an index in a vector of values. And I'm going to show a couple examples with that here, and then I'm going to show them when we do them together. Results in a value that satisfies the, uh, the values which are true or false, depending on how you phrase it. So I just have some numbers that go from 1 to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? I want all the numbers that are divisible by 2. Okay? All the divi numbers divisible by 2. So I take that list of numbers and put it on REM. If that equals 0, if the remainder, when div oh, I'm sorry, divided by 3. If that remainder is divided by 3 and it equals zero, no remainder, then that's true because it equals zero, and I'll get a one there. And sure enough, I do. Three gives me a one. Six gives me a one. Nine gives me one. All the other numbers end up with a remainder, and it's not true, so therefore zero is put in their place. If I want to know what the multiples of the numbers are, I can reference the original array of numbers See, numbers by reference, multiples, the thing that I just created, okay? And it'll give me that three, six, nine. This becomes extremely useful. <clears throat> so the multiples gives you this array of logicals, either zeros or ones. And if you reference the numbers with that logical, which has a one-for-one one comparison, only where that number is true will it hold on to that number. So numbers of multiples, boom, got it. What are the prime numbers from 1 to 20? Okay, and that's how this is done right here. So I asked, is this a prime number? Okay, is this are these numbers prime in here? And then it only holds on to the ones. It, this returns that array of numbers, 20 different logicals, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, and so on. And that, used as a reference, will give you the exact numbers. Very powerful. Boleyn logic is a system for combining expressions that are either true or false. This comes into play when we start writing more complicated parts um problems like if isabel likes grape juice and uh tate likes orange juice then we're gonna send them a cupcake okay or something like that okay um those those type of operations uh are combinations okay <clears throat> so n combinations both have to be true for n to be true if one's false and one's true you get nothing or or compilations, okay, if either of them is true, then they're both true, then the expression is true. Only when they're both false is it false. XOR, that's uh, explicit, okay? That means that only one of them can be true for XOR to work. And then the not, we're gonna go over the nots quite a bit, but it reverses exactly what you had before. So you end up with a reversal of what you had for A and B, okay, not A. And I'm going to go over that at length because that usually gives people a fit. We will use not a fair amount. Uh, and we, you will use and a fair amount. If both are true, then everything is true, okay? Or if one is true, at least one of the, the statements is true, then both are true. XOR. Only if one is true, and only one is true, is it true? And not inverts that process. 
and you'll see me use not when we go through these these examples. <clears throat> okay, arithmetic, uh, tip, uh, arithmetic operators plus or minus uh, causes MATLAB to perform arithmetic operations even when we have these um, logicals. They will be converted. A logical operator is a character that makes MATLAB perform logical operations on one or more two numbers or expressions. These are other operators that work for end. Uh, the pipe is uh, usually referred to as pipe. That is or. And the little squiggly is most often referred to as uh, not. And you'll see me use that quite a bit. Uh, not, but you have to think through a not because it, it gets tricky. Arguments to all logical operators are numbers. Zero is false. Any number is true. So any number I put in there is going, and if I say is not that, it's going to be true, okay? And I'll, sh I'll show that in a second here with some examples. They must be the same dimension when using in operators in, with arrays. With, uh, otherwise, they don't have to be. If I'm using a, comparing a single number to an array, they don't have to be the same size. But if I'm going to compare one array to a, another array, it's one for one. MATLAB does an element-wise evaluation of operator, okay? Uh, results in array that has the same dimension as the other two, but only contains zeros and ones. And those were our one-bit uh, numbers. Okay, we're almost at the end. When operators with the array, and, and then I'm gonna do examples. When operating with arrays and scalars, MATLAB does element-wise operation on each array element with scalars, okay? So in other words, if I have an, uh, a logical, okay? Um, no, I'm, I'm saying that wrong. Each, you do it as we showed in the examples, one by one. So for, if you do anything with an array, you're gonna have the same number of objects as that array. Okay, let's, here's my precedence. This is on page 180. <clears throat> this, you gotta know this, but you already know the parentheses take precedence over everything else. Exponentiation is higher than multiplication and division. Addition and subtraction is uh, lower than multiplication. But these rela uh, relational operators and the logicals are all below that with the exception of the not command, which is in between multiplication and explanation, exponentiation. Okay. So let's say we have a, a group of data for the age of people, 45, 47, 15, 13, and 11. And we want to find out who's a teenager, um, who's more than 12 and less than 20 years old and so on and so forth. And we can do that really easily with large lists. We're just doing a small list here. So here's my list age. And I say age is greater than 13. Okay. That's going to give me all the numbers that are greater than or equal to 13. I'm sorry. It's going to give me all the numbers other than the 11. Okay. And then if I say age is less than 19, it's going to give me all the numbers that are less than 19. And so in the end, if I put the two together with an end, greater than 13 and less than 19, I am going to get the two teenage numbers, 15 and 13 right here. So by combining these two expressions, I will get only when both of these are ones, when I use the end, do I get a one, one or true, true. Another example, here's the age in there again. Who is not a teenager? So if age is greater than or equal to 13 and age is less than or equal to 19, okay? Once again, only where this is true, do we actually get this, okay? So age, and I put not, okay? So it takes where that's true and it flips it. 
So now I get the 45, 47, 11 year old. You remember before these were one, one for this. I said not, these become ones, okay? And I get that, okay? Who is an adult or a child, okay? Same thing, age greater than 19 or age greater than 13 greater than age. And I'll get that same answer again. Okay, 20, the last slide. It should make, it should make everybody pretty happy. It took a little longer on this one than I did the last time. Uh, MATLAB has some built-in functions or commands. Uh, and I don't use these too much. And A comma B or A comma B and not A. I usually use it written out the way we have above this uh, to do these. Are there any questions by anybody? I noticed a few more people have joined our group. I got to figure out who they are real quick. So I'm going to give you a second to go ahead and fire up MATLAB or uh, um, Octave. And while I figure out who has showed up that wasn't here before, Tate was here, Tassin, Sawyer was here, Natalie. Natalie, did I have you from before? I think I did. Let me just look. No, I did not. Okay, so I got Natalie. Mason was here. Lied, I know. I got Kush. Jordan. Jared was here. Jake. I got Jake. I know I got Jake. Jabin. Jabin came. I got him now. Let me find him on my list. Jabin, 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 Jabin. Jabin. Where are you at? Jabin, what's your last name? Let's see. Bub. Okay. Jabin, I got you. Jabin, you got to tell me. What are you using? Are you using MATLAB or are you using Octave? Unmute your mic and tell me. Javin, tell me. Oh, I've lost Javin. Okay. And I think I've got everybody else. I hope I didn't knock him off somehow. Z is here now. Okay, let me get Z. Same question to you, Z. Are you using MATLAB or are you using uh, something else? Gavin, I hope I didn't knock you off. Let me send him a note and then I'm gonna start up on my examples, okay? I will post all those slides tonight. Uh, well, I'll post them right after we're done here. Uh, uh, Dr. Drew, did you see the chat? Uh, no, I did not. Where is that located at? Uh, I don't know if it's different from computer to computer, but um, Gavin just said uh, GNU is crashing his computer. GNU? Yeah, he said GNU is crashing my computer and I'm trying to get MATLAB. Okay, okay, that's fine. That's I fine. do not have a mic. So the, the, the what I would tell him too is the other thing I would say is, um, you know, if you're having a lot of problems, just call me on the phone and we'll sit down and we'll work through it together. And we'll get this to work. These are this is going to be an unusual time for all of us, um, because and it's not going to go away quick. Doctor Drew, do you see at the bottom of the screen where it says "Invite Participate Share Screen" and there should be chat right there at the very bottom? If you like, move your mouse around, like on the uh, Zoom. Do you see that or no? No, I don't. Let me see. I got over here too. I got unmute all. Let me make sure I got everybody unmuted. Because I don't know how your screen compares to ours. He's your host. Okay, you guys can remute. I I unmuted you all to make sure that I didn't accidentally knock Javin. I see Javin's there. Okay, we're good. I'm going to continue on. Um, yeah, there's a chat in here. You say somewhere. Let me just say pause, annotate, or okay. Uh, this is new software to me. This is the first time I've used it today. So there's 23 participants, which means I have all but two here which is pretty good. Okay, polling. I do not see it. I will find it after when we get done. I, I will find that chat, okay? And we'll get that worked out. 
Okay, so let me just show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to open up our beloved Octave. I know people had trouble with Octave. Well, so did I. I had trouble with Octave too when I first started it, okay? But I worked through it and figured it out. Let me, Dana says that she got knocked off, so let me just send that to her. Okay, okay, so let's, let me grab my, I've got everything done so that I can do this fairly quick, and then I'm gonna um, put the editor back on, and what I'm gonna do uh, with the editor, I'm gonna pull all this into the editor, which you can actually take and cut and paste right into MATLAB if you want, okay, or into Octave. So I'm gonna do all this in the command window for now, okay? So let me clear that out. And then I'm gonna start with A equals three less than zero. Three is not less than zero. So it's gonna return a zero, a logical zero and put it in A. These get progressively harder as I go across. Now, if we were in class together, what I would be doing is I'd be putting them up on the board and telling people to do it in their head and, and see whether they can tell me what the answer is. So five greater than one, two, or three. So five is greater than one, yep, one. Five is greater than two, one. Five is greater than three, one. So B is gonna get a logical array of one, one, one. C, one, two, this is an array compared to another array. So it's gonna compare zero to one. And it's gonna say zero is not greater than one. So it's false, it gets a zero. Three is greater than two. It's gonna say yes, it's gonna get a one. And five is greater than three. It's gonna get another one. So I'm gonna get zero, one, one in logicals. Does that make sense to everybody, I hope? <clears throat> Another one. Okay. I can go the opposite direction. It doesn't have to, you know, where I have a, a constant here and it's compared to the numbers 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 as generated right here. Okay. The first case, no. Second case, no. Third case, no. And then 6 is greater than 5. 8 is greater than 5. 10 is greater than five. So I'm gonna get zero, 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 one, one, one and logical stored in D. And just as a note, let me just put this in. If I, um, if I call this D1 equals zero colon two colon 10, I'm ad living now, okay? Uh, if I did D1 of D, it's going gonna, it's gonna to flip me back. So I'm doing it by reference. Only when it's true is, am I going to get the numbers back. Six, eight, ten. Everybody see that? Hope so. This is what I was talking about with the not command. Not can get you tied in knots, and not causes more problems for students uh, than any other command. But in this case, if it's not a number, Okay, if it's a number, you're gonna get a zero. And if it is a zero, okay, you're gonna get a one. Okay, so you see where the zeros are. Well, there's only one. You get a one there. And anywhere where there's a number, since I use the not, okay, I get uh, a zero. Now I'm gonna do some things with greater than. I'm gonna do a couple examples with greater than. If three is greater than zero, okay, when I read it, is three greater than zero? No, it's not, so I get a zero. Oh, uh, it is, I'm sorry, three is greater than zero, at least it is on Thursdays, uh, and I do get a one, so it is true. F. So 
Is two greater than two? No, it's not. I'm going to get a zero. G, is two greater than four? Okay, no, it's not, so I get a zero. Okay, I'm going to do some less than examples first. Less than or equal to. These are pretty easy at first, okay? Pretty straightforward, but they're gonna get more difficult as we go along. So I start out slow. Okay, three is less than or equal to three. That is absolutely true. And I get a one. Two is less than or equal to three, okay? That is absolutely false, so I'm gonna get a zero. Two equal to two, notice I use two equals here, one equal on the other side, so it's gonna throw it back into K. That's absolutely true, I'm gonna get a one in K. Two not equal to two. That's absolutely false. It is equal to two. So I'm going to get a zero there. Okay, three greater than two. That's true. And two less than one. That's false. I am going to get a zero. three greater than two or two less than one. Well, three is greater than two, so I immediately I know it's gonna be a one. I'm gonna get a one back. That's true. Any questions so far? <clears throat> Here's an interesting one. As I'm doing these, see if you can do them in your head. Not seven. Greater than zero. Well, not seven is gonna throw back a zero, okay? And zero is not greater than zero, so I'm gonna get a false or a zero. Is prime, okay? One is not a prime. I found that out this morning. I actually thought it was. Uh, so it is not a prime, so you get returned to zero. However, is prime three is, is true, so I'm going to get a one back. Notice it throws it into answer, same as MATLAB. But I could also do this with an array. Is prime one to 10, okay? It's gonna give me a one wherever it's prime. So two, three, five, seven. It's gonna get, a, uh, it's get, and everywhere else it's gonna be a zero. So there's one, two, three, four, whoops. Two, three, four, five, and seven. Yes, I did get it right. You can sum those you want to know how many primes are between 1 and 20. There's 8, okay? But you can sum them. So you can combine uh, expressions to get an answer to certain things, to simplify. I recommend doing them individually and then putting them in the combined expression so that you know what it's doing. Once again, the not command is not easy. The not command, I'm saying not zero one zero two zero three. Wherever there's zeros, it's gonna be a one, and wherever there's a number, it's gonna be a zero.
I'm going to do three examples now, and then I'm going to do this in a uh, .m file. Okay, so this is example one. <clears throat> Okay, this is an addition plus a logical. So it's going to do this operation first. So 12 plus four is equal to 16, and 12 is not larger, so it's gonna throw back into answer, okay, a zero. If I change this, okay, and put parentheses around this comparison, then four is less than 12, it returns a one. The one is added to 12 and I'm going to get 13. Here's a little bit of a trick problem. Okay, minus one plus four is gonna do that first, is gonna get three and three is less than four, so you're gonna get one. Yo, I can't talk to you right now. I'm in the middle of a class. Oh shit, my bad. Just sure. <clears throat> yeah, a real important class too. Uh, so, a fun class. This is example two. Okay, nums one, I took a random number from zero to 10, integer, okay? That is one row, 10 columns, okay? And I stored it in nums one, okay? So there's all the numbers. Okay, A equals not the remainder. Which ones of these can be divided by two? Whenever this is divided by two, you're gonna get a zero and not a zero will give you a one, okay? So you're gonna get a one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, one. Almost all ones, okay? Could have done this this way too. And only pull back out of this list all the even numbers. It gets rid of the nine and gets rid of the five because they were zeros there by reference. If I wanted to know how many even numbers there were, number that are even, I could have just summed A that I got from the previous and eight of the 10 were even. It's my last example, and then I'm gonna throw all this back into a, a file. Let's see, example three, boom. Okay. Ooh, I accidentally got rid of, okay, so my list. Okay, I'm gonna to to type this back in because I, I accidentally deleted it. My list equals Randy numbers between zero and a thousand. So I am getting an array of a hundred numbers between zero and a thousand and putting it in my list. Grab this and stick it back in here. I must have erased it by accident. Okay. By 13, I want to know which ones are divisible by 13 of that list that I got. Okay. And then I am going to, by reference, grab all the numbers that were in that list, which I didn't show you the list because it's quite large. Okay. That were divisible by 13. And those are the numbers that through those random numbers of those 100 random numbers, all of those numbers were divisible by 13. Okay.
That is gone. Okay. This is the editor window. It is similar to, it, well, it's the same as a .m file in MATLAB. Unfortunately, this code does not have uh, any kind of live script. Someday probably will. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take everything that I just did for you with comments and drop it in here, okay? This could be cut and paste directly back into MATLAB. Okay, can be back into MATLAB. Okay, either as a .m file or as a live script file. Okay, and if I run this, okay, it's going to ask me. Oops. Run. It's going to tell me to save it. I got to save it to a file. <laughs> And we'll call this class 14105.m. Okay, add a uh, directory to my load path. And when I look back in my command window, it has now executed all those commands that we just had a second ago, all the way through. So let me just do it again. Oops, I put that all the way down about here. So everything's gone. Grab up this. And once again, I have all the commands in here that I just entered and all the answers all the way back. It's got some giant spaces in here. I'm not sure why, but it does. Now would be a great time for you to ask any questions that you have about anything. Uh, yeah, I actually have a question. How do you get into the editor file? Okay, so uh, let's just close. Watch this. I'm going to close it. Okay, and I say file oh, edit. Uh, I can either edit. Uh, let me see. File open. Open recently open files. Okay, or I could just open a new one, a new script. Okay, so that'll give me a blank one. Okay, that's the one I was just working on. That'll give me a blank one right there. And then I expanded this by doing command shift and plus to make it larger, right? And uh, then I just cut and pasted it back into this, which is the same as what this is. Other question, look, I know this isn't a perfect solution, but um, we can't, it's not, wouldn't be fair to the students uh, to require people to buy MATLAB. I am working on a solution that gives everybody MATLAB for free for the rest of the semester, but it hasn't happened yet. So in the meantime, this is the best I could come up with. And I had to learn it too. Um, so for those of you that didn't buy MATLAB or get the one month free, this isn't terrible, okay? I mean, you get what you pay for. We paid nothing for it. And it actually works pretty daggone well, considering everything. And it allows us to move forward. I wanna make sure you all get good grades this semester and graduate on time in a couple of years where this will be a distant memory, all this uh, stuff that's going on right now. I will post this video. In fact, I'm gonna close this video out right now. Let me see, stop. Okay, let's just see how I do this. Okay, here we go. Dr. Drew. Yeah? I have a, I have a question. Are we still planning on taking the final as planned? And if so, do you recommend us getting MATLAB for that? I'm hoping that that will be taken care of for the final. I, I don't know. From this point on, for at least a while, I'm going to give you MATLAB and, and computational methods light, you might say. You're going to see me do a lot of the problems for you in videos. And uh, 